The search continues for the gunman in the subway shooting in New York. We're going to have the very latest coming up. Plus, we'll hear from one of the people injured in that shooting. Plus, it might sound a little strange, but what would you think if you could pay for things with your hand? RJ Marcus is going to explain coming up in your morning headlines. Plus, good morning. Katie's Science Lab, after a Fiesta Marchish hiatus, is back. We're on the road, we're at Brooks Collegiate Academy, and we've got some kiddos here that are gonna learn about force and motion today as we make cotton ball catapults, but there's a holiday coming up, Easter, and so I had to get some Easter candy. So we're gonna catapult some peeps here in just a little bit on Katie's Science Lab. GMSA at nine starts right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Say that three times fast. Catapults and peeps. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, April 13th. And thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, I'm excited about today's show. Uh, Easter's just around the corner. We have a whole lot going on. We begin, though, with today's 9 at 9. A man and woman were found dead by someone passing by under a bridge off Evers Road near 410 yesterday evening. San Antonio police say the man and woman were living in the drainage ditch. The cause of death has not been determined yet and the two have not been identified. However, police believe they were in their 30s or 40s. Border cities like Del Rio and Eagle Pass have seen more Texas National Guardsmen in their areas. In response to mass migrant response rehearsals, this comes after Governor Greg Abbott announced aggressive actions ahead of the end of the CDC's decision to lift Title 42 next month. Currently, 6,500 military personnel are working along a 350-mile stretch of the border from Harlingen to Del Rio. President Biden is expected to announce another $750 million in military aid for Ukraine as soon as today. The Pentagon believes Russia is now focusing on controlling eastern Ukraine. Yesterday, Russian President Vladimir Putin said peace talks have hit a dead end, vowing to continue the invasion. However, the lead negotiator for Ukraine had a different tone about peace talks, saying negotiations have been difficult but are still going on. New York police continuing to search for a man who rented a van they believe might be connected to yesterday's subway shooting, although they haven't established a definitive link. Officials identified the man they're looking for as 62-year-old Frank James. They say a key to the rental van was found at the scene along with a semi-automatic handgun and other items. Police have found the van, but it was empty. Actor and comedian Gilbert Gottfried passed away at the age of 67. His family said he died after a long illness. Gottfried suffered from myotonic dystrophy type 2, an inherited muscular dystrophy that affects the muscles and ultimately his heart. Congress has asked the Federal Trade Commission to investigate the Washington commanders. A House committee says they've found information and documents that show a pattern of concerning business practices. They accuse the NFL team's ownership of unspecified financial misconduct. A spokesperson for the commanders denies the allegations and the team vows to cooperate with any investigation. Apple is again warning customers about threats to privacy for iPhone users. Those threats are coming from proposed laws in Europe and the U.S. that would force Apple to allow apps to be installed from places other than its own app store. Hopes for a turnaround on Wall Street after another down day. Overnight futures pointing to a higher open this morning. The S&P, Dow and Nasdaq all closed down 0.3 percent. Latest numbers on inflation driving the markets. Compared to last year, inflation is running at a 40 year high. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force is expected to recommend that kids eight years and older should be screened for anxiety. The decision to recommend early screening in children was based on a review of studies that evaluated screening tests in adolescents and the benefits of early treatment. And that's today's 9 at 9. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 75 degrees now. It was kind of humid when I stepped out for my, my other serving of coffee. Mm -hmm. Justin. Yeah, I hate to use the word gross, but that's kind of where we are right now. Mm. That's where we're standing. It's humid, it's muggy, it's cloudy. If you don't enjoy that kind of weather, it does change pretty drastically this afternoon. We get some dry air in here, some gusty winds. Of course, that poses a threat because we have to start talking about grass fires again. That's been a, a theme, a constant theme so far this spring. Right now, 75 degrees at the airport. It's 74 at Kerrville, 76 in New Brunfels. It's warm. That mugginess kept temperatures up overnight. And next few days, 
Well, today we're up around 94. Their fire danger is there this afternoon. A little cooler tomorrow. Thank goodness. 86. It'll be a nice day on your Thursday. And then by Friday, moisture returns and we get some morning clouds. Still nice, though. 85 for a high. We look at the cloud cover. It's uh, it's been pretty extensive this morning, but it is quickly clearing from northwest to southeast. So that clearing line's probably just about an hour away. The sun pops out, and then uh, there we see the risk for that uh, fire increasing fire danger because uh, we'll have those gusty winds kicking in northwest 10 to 20, gusty to 25. Basically, the western half of the state's under a red flag warning today. It, it's a large area that's going to be under the gun for the potential for grass fires, and that includes here locally. That goes until 8 p.m. This evening, by the way, forecast 83 degrees by 11 o'clock. Skies are clearing 87 noontime. We're all the way up to 94 this afternoon. Mostly sunny northwesterly winds in that 10 to 20 range gusting at 25 as we said and low humidity that goes into this evening as well with uh, winds starting to die down some tonight. Uh, we're going to take a look back at some of the uh, severe weather from yesterday and look ahead to Easter weekend uh, with that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Take a quick look at uh, Transcad right now as the morning commute is slowly winding down. You don't see it here, but we've got still some leftover slowdowns all over town in different parts of town. That's the kind of stuff that usually clears up in about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, the morning commute just now coming to a close. We do not see any accidents around town as of 904 in your morning headlines. New developments from that New York subway attack and reaction from frightened passengers and no need for credit or debit. A company is offering a microchip to put under your skin as a form of payment. Wow. RJ Marcus joins us with those stories and more. Good you morning. got our attention there, RJ. Yeah, definitely did. taking a contact list to the next level, I guess, here. Yeah, very interesting concept from this tech company. But guys, let's start first with the latest out of New York, where a man who police were initially looking for after that terrifying subway shooting and attack is now considered to be a suspect. So this is 62 year old Frank James. He was initially a person of interest, but that's changed as investigators have gotten more information. Now there's still no confirmation if he is the shooter or acted alone. So police said the initial investigation showed that the shooter opened smoke grenades on the train. You could see all that chaos right there and fired his gun 33 times, striking at least 10 people before the train stopped and stunned passengers escaped to the platform of the 36th Street station. And as this investigation continues, more victims describing their heroin ride and how quickly things turn dangerous. All I see was uh, just black smoke. And that's when I got hit. I didn't think, you know, it was serious until I got off the train. I put my pants down and the size of a quarter just gushing out blood. I was shot. I'm still shocked there and I'm shaking. This pregnant woman was in front of me. I was trying to help her. I didn't know there were shots at first. I just thought it was a black smoke bomb. She said, I'm pregnant with a baby. I hugged her and then the bum rush continued. I got pushed and that's when I got shot in the back of my knee. Yeah, just a scary situation all the way around there. So police said they were looking for James because he rented a U-Haul van that could be connected to the attack. Police actually found a key to the van at the scene. So we'll continue to follow the latest there. Okay, switching gears a little bit. So we're still seeing high gas prices across the country. So the latest White House idea to reduce your pain at the pump involves running your car on corn. So let's kind of explain this here a little bit. President Biden announced the Environmental Protection Agency will allow E15, that is gasoline that is that uses a 15% ethanol blend to be sold in the US this summer. So ethanol comes from plants like corn. So its biggest advantage is the price. Experts say E15 gas could be up to 10 cents a gallon cheaper than regular fuel right now. But the EPA actually has a reason for capping ethanol content at 10% during the summer. It creates more smog than normal gas because it evaporates faster and reacts with sunlight. Of course, with summer coming around, that's kind of a big deal. Some Republicans say broader action is actually needed to really lower gas prices. OK, speaking of the environment, a new study this morning suggests the climate crisis is supercharging rainfall in hurricanes. The study was published Tuesday in the journal Nature Communications. It found that rainfall from hurricanes during the record breaking 2020 season was as much as 11% higher due to human caused climate change. Researchers determined that global warming increased hourly rainfall rates in tropical storms and hurricanes by 5 to 10%. And when they looked at just hurricanes, the increase was 8 to 11%. These findings suggest the threat will likely increase more in the future, according to those scientists.
And finally this morning, we're talking about this a little bit earlier, guys. Instead of carrying your wallet in your pocket or purse, well, a tech company wants you to carry it under your skin. Yeah, really weird <laughs> stuff here. So a British Polish company called Wallet More is selling microchips as alternate payment options. So the chip is about the size of a grain of rice and can be implanted into your body. Now get this, preferably in your hand. So I don't know if anyone else <laughs> would want to do this anywhere else. But anyways, uh, once you activate it using a digital wallet app, you will can uh, basically you can start making purchases by just swiping your hand over a card reader. Now, right now, the chips are only being sold in Europe. But if you have buyer's remorse, get this too bad. Once the implant goes in, there are no refunds. Well, any takers. Wow. <laughs> you won't lose it. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's There's true. the win. The loss is it. It's kind of freaky in a way. It's yeah. a little weird, yeah. yeah. And, and the, apparently, um, they were saying that they have specialists that could implant it for you, or you could just go get that done yourself. I don't know how I feel about <laughs> yeah. all of this. So many questions. Well, and the video is kind of funny because you have the card reader there, and, yeah. and the person's like over, like, oh, they're, well, you give me money. No, yeah. you give me money. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I don't know. Interesting, interesting Strange idea. Strange new world. Contactless, yes. Con yeah. That truly contactless. <laughs> RJ, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Right now, 909, about 75 degrees. Up next on GMSA at 9. Max Nessie is going to share how Southside ISD is helping their teachers to try to relax and stay calm during stressful times. And Katie Science Lab is back after a bit of a break. They are on the road and they are out at Brooks Collegiate Academy. Welcome back, just about 9.13. These last two years have not been easy for anyone. And for teachers, it has been one obstacle after another, change after change. And we talk about the idea of being burnt out and the importance of mental health. And now one local school district is addressing these concerns with a special calming room for their faculty. Max Massey joins us live. Max, good morning, good to see you, my friend. What is in this calming room? Good morning, guys. These calming rooms are awesome. Not only is it cool lights, each one's you know, unique to the respective school, but there's also massage chairs and these are heavy duty massage chairs. So we're joined here with Sylvia from the Southside ISD Foundation. So Sylvia, how did this idea of these common rooms come about? Good morning and thank you so much for um, having us here. They came about because of our counselors at the high school specifically, well, all over the district. They were seeing our teachers very stressed and having to deal with so much from the pandemic to virtual learning to coping with our kids having to understand and so as they were trying to come up with a way to alleviate that stress initially they reached out to the foundation to see if we could bring in massage therapists and or or something well of course with covid and everything um we didn't feel comfortable bringing individuals over so the consensus was to buy these massage chairs and they're not cheap. They're rather expensive. But interestingly enough, we were getting infused with donors. A lot of donors were coming to the foundation. We're a 501c3 and we're a fundraising arm for the school district. We do scholarships and grants, but this is outside the scope of the academic grants that we get. So we met and the foundation decided to come up with a general support grant so that we could help in times of crisis. And this was definitely a time of crisis. They recognized and felt sympathy and empathy for the teachers. They wanted to do something and they felt like they needed to be heard. So validation was a big part of this from the counselors and the teachers saying, look, we, we're hearing you. We're listening to you. We know you need something. And so they bought 10 massage chairs. They run about $1,000 each. And this came from donated money, not taxpayer dollars. But Amerigroup was a part of underwriting this because every year they give us a um, like a wellness grant. And so we were able to use that money along with other dollars that we raised uh, to buy the massage chairs. And they are a huge success. In terms of them being a success, what kind of feedback have you heard from teachers, faculty members? Well, they're using them, that's for sure. And uh, I know some of the administrators are like, can we get in there? But um, we try to stay away and just give them their space and their time. Uh, they have really uh, made the rooms very unique to each of the settings. Each, every one of our campuses have them. Um, the elementary schools, the high school has two. Our pre-K center has two because they have the biggest staffs. Um, but they really do take advantage of their time out. And at first they didn't believe it and were a little shy and thought it was like a trick. But um, nope, it's becoming very popular. 
That is fantastic. And we, we obviously talk about mental health and the idea of burnout, which, you know, obviously two big themes during this pandemic. Do you think this is going to help teachers stay calm and, you know, kind of help decompress during what I can only imagine is an extremely stressful job? We really do hope so. Like I said, one of the things that we really heard, and I know that the board was very um, open to and listening, was the validation part that, you know, there's not much we can do. I mean, money helps. We can buy supplies. We can give scholarships. We can give grants. But I think just letting teachers know that we know your job is hard. And here's something that we hope helps. Our counselors are amazing. And they're on the front line of helping not just our parents and students, but our teachers as well. And we don't really have that um, built into the public ed system. And I think that our social workers, our counselors that we do have try to make make more of what they can do. And this is just one piece outreach. And they thank goodness we're able to use the foundation for that. And the foundation was very, very excited to help. All right, Sylvia, thank you so much for your time this morning. And thank guys, you. Mark, Stephanie, if you guys, uh, if you want to see more, we're going to have an inside look at one of the specific unique rooms and also hear from a local counselor how it's helping her out. That's going to be on the news at noon and KSAT.com. All right. We look forward to it. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Good to see you. Justin joins us now. And uh, Justin, our rainfall bank account apparently has a negative balance. Ooh, oh. It's not, it's not a good situation. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to, to get some free water. We need it in the worst way. Yesterday wasn't great. We got some storms, but it was not near enough rain. 2.58 inches for the year so far here in San Antonio. That puts us about four inches behind Del Rio, only about two tenths of an inch. That's about three inches behind. Austin's doing OK, but for us, it's uh, some serious drought starting to settle in here. And that's why stage two water restrictions are now in effect for SAWS customers. Still once a week watering, but we've restricted the times a little bit more with SAWS has uh, 7 to 11 and 7 to 11, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Obviously, it's done with your address that the uh, last number on what day you can water. As far as rain chances go, Saturday and Sunday are next chance, and it's not great. It'll be some afternoon isolated stuff. So I, I don't know that's gonna help us all that much. It's, uh, it's been a rough spring so far. Hopefully down the line somewhere, uh, something will get uh, some better rain chances because if we don't, uh, this fire threat's going to continue. We've been talking about it, it feels like, for several weeks now. Dew points are in the 60s at the moment. This changes later today. We've got very dry air across West Texas, and that is poised to move in here with a frontal boundary, and that, that's going to happen around midday. Now, this front will not cool us down. It just pulls in drier air, and these dew points are awful low. Single digits, uh, 20 uh, out west around Del Rio. We'll see dew points in the 30s. That is that is dry enough to, when you combine that with gusty winds, you get that pretty significant fire threat. And it is all of West Texas today where that fire threat is going to be fairly high. Winds are going to gust to 25 miles per hour in some cases. And locally, uh, that red flag warning extends basically all the way east to San Antonio and includes Floresville, New Braunfels. That's going to go through 8 p.m. this evening. Wind gust forecast gust I'd say up to 25 miles per hour It'll be up and down today. It'll fluctuate a little bit, but it'll be that northwesterly wind uh, that we're dealing with. And those winds die down tonight. No campfires or burn piles. You're going to want to avoid using tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Don't drag trailer chains. That's how you get those fires on the sides of highways. And don't park your vehicles on grass. Just some tips there to avoid any sort of grass fires today. Forecast 83 by 11 o'clock. We've got the clearing skies, low humidity this afternoon. Temperatures jump all the way up to 92 at 3 o'clock, 93, 4 p.m. And we top out 94 this afternoon. Now, as I mentioned, those winds do calm some tonight. More in a range of 5 to 10 miles per hour. We're down to 83 at 8 p.m. and 80 at 9 p.m. There's the scene outside. Skies are still cloudy right now. That's going to change here pretty soon, too. 75 degrees at the airport. Southerly winds at 8. And you can see the clearing line. Well, it's almost to Bear County here, just some partly cloudy skies across the hill country, and these clouds will really begin to thin out here over the next couple of hours, and you'll start to see the sun. 73 Helotus, 76 Bolverde, 75 at Randolph. You're at 77 right now in Castroville. Yesterday, we did see some severe weather. This is just one of many pictures that came in on our KSAC Connect. That's one way to measure your hail. You see a, a bottle cap there. Uh, thank you so much for all the pictures, and yes, we had several reports of not only hail, but tornadoes yesterday up around Salado. That's where there was some damage and unfortunately some injuries, and then a lot of hail reports 
stretching from San Antonio to Dallas up across the plains. And there will be more severe weather today. Widespread severe weather. Little Rock, Memphis, up to St. Louis and Indianapolis as this storm system marches east. For us, it's just that fire threat, those gusty winds. 94, 86 on Thursday, 85 Friday. Tomorrow morning will feel great, by the way. But humidity comes back into play this weekend, and that may lead to some isolated showers and storms during the afternoon hours Saturday and on Easter Sunday. We'll be right back. Welcome back 924 this morning. The students at Brooks Collegiate Academy off Vance Jackson getting a special science lesson. Thanks to Katie Blake and her trusty assistant, Mr. David Sears. Katie's science lab on the road is back and Katie, what kind of experiment are you doing with the kiddos today? Hello, yes, my trusty assistant. He's been so helpful this morning, passing out all different kinds of Easter candy so that we can get our experiment underway. So. Uh, these students here at Brooks Collegiate Academy are making catapults, and we've got a few different objects that we're going to launch. So what we were actually doing just a few minutes ago before uh, you guys checked in with us here is we were talking about the different mass of the objects that we're going to be launching. So our catapults are pretty much ready, but I want to finish you guys kind of talking about which objects we think have the least amount of mass. So we've got our Easter eggs filled with jelly beans. Those are done. The one jelly bean by itself. And then we got three more objects to talk about which has the most mass out of these three. So all of these are kind of light. So this is going to be tricky. You're going to have to compare them. We have our peep, hot tamale peeps, because this is all that was left at Target. The peeps have really been wiped out. If you haven't gotten your peeps yet, I'm sorry. You may only have hot tamales. Um, so we've got our peeps, our cotton balls, and our pom-poms. So if you guys can kind of hold these in your hands and tell me which one you think out of these three has the most mass. I think I know what, what my hypothesis is, but I want to hear yours. So way in the back, back row, what do you think? I think it's the peeps. 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 We'll get you a mic. Yes. Why do you think it's the peeps? Peep. Because it's big and it's, when I put it on my hand compared to this, I think it's more, it has more mass because it's more heavy. I thought it was going to be second. It weighs a little more than the cotton ball? Mm-hmm. You put them in your hands? Yeah. Yes. Very good. I'm thinking, yes, the peep is the next one with the most mass so that'll be number three so now we're left with pom-poms and cotton balls both very light objects and the uh, the pom-pom is smaller so we may automatically think that has the the least amount of mass but keep in mind it's a little more it's a little more dense all this material is packed down into a smaller little area here meanwhile our cotton ball it's easy you can kind of unravel it so it's not quite as dense so which one do we think out of these maybe has the most the most mass. What do we think? Who have I not called on? Yes. Um, I think the cotton balls because um, it, I weighed them and the way that they were, the way of the mass of the cotton balls were different from the mass of the pom pom balls. Yeah. yeah. So. And you, your idea was what? What she said because this one, because what she said, you can just unravel this one. It's not very like heavy. This one would probably. Be more heavy because they're they're compact. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, probably yeah. have more. So, based on now what we know about the mass of these objects, we want to make our hypothesis or what we think about which object is going to fly the highest. So, the one with the least mass probably will fly the highest, right? Okay. So here in the break, we're going to make our hypothesis, and then we test our hypothesis by putting our catapults into motion. That's coming up right after the break. Collegiate Academy, where on this fine Wednesday morning, we are putting a force into action, a force into motion, if you will, by launching different types of objects, some Easter-themed objects. So if you missed it a few minutes ago, we've listed our objects in order of greatest mass to least, and based on that, we think we know which objects are going to fly highest. So the one with the least mass should be able to fly highest, right? So let's put that hypothesis into motion. We're going to start by launching our cotton ball. So we have our catapults assembled and ready to go. David can show you a close-up version there. Uh, this is very high tech with some popsicle sticks and rubber bands, but we're ready to go here. So everybody put your cotton ball in your little bottle cap launcher. Pull back with your finger on the launcher. You may have to hold on to the, to the popsicle stick and Three, then blast off. Two, one, let her fly. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
Okay, so the cotton ball, the cotton ball did pretty well, right? Yeah. Babe. The cotton ball did pretty well. Let's try, let's try pom poms. Ready? I made a hypothesis. Oh, you did? Ready? Okay. We already got hypothesis Go. working Whoa. out here. I think you can jump All right, that one went pretty high. You got your uh, pop What about? I made oh, mine a little different. Load up, load up your pom poms. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it all together, so we can, so we can figure it out. Let's so load do, up. Let's make sure we do the peeps. Let's do what? Do the peeps. You, you want to do the launch your peeps? Okay, real quick. La launch your cotton ball. La launch your your uh, pom poms real quick, and then we're gonna get to the peeps because that's gonna be the fun. Oh wow, those were good. Okay, now load up your peeps. Who likes peeps? Fire away. Go ahead. Fire away. Now load up your peeps. That's okay. It's okay. No, just kind of set it on there where you can fire it off. Yeah. There you go. That? Set it. Just, just set it on there. Just set it on there. There you go. Just set it on there. All right. It's a balance. This may be a world record for flying peeps. I don't know. Okay, watch. Watch, watch, watch. Okay, watch. watch. Yeah. Oh, all right. Here we go. Y'all got it on there? All right, three, two, one. one. Let her fly. Woo! Oh, that's a lot of mass. Those didn't go that far, did they? It didn't go as high, did it? I didn't. Wow. It's a baker. So far, so far, what do you think is what do you think is working and what's what's not working? So well? this one is working the most because it like flew all the way to her. It has too much mass. It went pretty far. The cotton ball went all the way over to her. Yeah. Okay. So that that's, that's this one kind of went went the highest. Okay. It bounced up to right here. How did the peep do? The peep didn't do very well because of my small little cap. <laughs> I can't. Uh, all right, so we got the peeps. Okay, so now let's do the uh, do the jelly bean by itself. Just the jelly bean. All right, y'all ready? All right, here we go. Oh. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> All right, what's your gotta do the egg? All right, let's load up the egg because the egg's got two jelly beans in it. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. That was mine. That was mine. <laughs> we got jelly beans flying all over the room. I thought the peeps would be pretty good. Jelly beans are flying pretty good. Okay, you got your egg ready to go? All right, Katie, give them the countdown for your egg. Get your egg. All right. <laughs> all right. Last one. And then, so once we do this last one, come back to me real quick so we can, before we have to tell the folks bye, that we can figure out what actually happened, okay? So try your egg. Three, two, one. No, 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 no. Not very much air time. Okay. All right. All right. So, what do we think flew the highest? You think the jelly bean? Jelly bean. Jelly bean. Jelly bean, and then maybe our maybe the pom pom, and then the cotton ball. No, the cotton ball went a little further. Cotton ball first. Yeah. Okay. And then were peeps last or the egg? Yeah. Peeps last. Peeps last. Cool. Uh, All right, guys. Peeps ended so there last. You go. We made our hypothesis, and what actually happened was a little bit different, but that's okay. We kind of learned something about the mass of these different objects, right? You put them into motion. Great job. And I think we have some extra some extra Easter candy for the kiddos. So that'll do it for David and I in this edition of Katie Science Lab from Brooks Collegiate Academy. These kids are awesome. They're gonna they're gonna wave you off. Soon. You guys are great. Great job, everybody. That was super fun. Yeah. The peep didn't go too far. Okay, no. Katie, David, thank okay, you guys. Wait, don't, don't eat the ones that you've been messing with. <laughs> I'll give you some fresh ones out of the bag. Did you hear it, David? Okay. <laughs> thank you guys. Don't eat the ones you've been messing with. Good advice, David. Gotta keep it safe. Or, or do. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we don't advise that. <laughs> Looking outside with live cam, 35 degrees. We're going to warm up today. I'm glad the, the peeps are good for something because... Yes.
<laughs> Not a fan. Uh, they're okay. Really <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the pollen count. Uh, you know, this is the number that hey, everyone's kind of moaning and groaning about, and I'm right there with you. 16,890. Got even higher today. It's in the very high category. Mold and grass are low. We are in the thick of oak season. You can see it out there. The rain didn't really help us yesterday to wash any of that pollen out of the atmosphere, so it is still there. Radar and satellite here, we can see that uh, the clouds are trying to clear out. This is going to happen pretty quick. We're going to see the skies clear, sun will pop out. That dry air is already trying to work into the hill country. It'll be here in San Antonio fairly soon. So our forecast, skies clearing by 11 a.m., 83 degrees, 89 by 1 p.m. Notice the winds. We've got winds northwesterly, 10 to 20 and gusty and low humidity. Uh, the gusty winds, low humidity, those two things combined means we have that fire danger today. Red flag warnings are in effect, and that's going to go through 8 p.m. this evening before those winds calm a little bit. And we'll get some great weather coming up tomorrow morning uh, with some changes showing up by Easter weekend. Another look at that seven-day forecast is coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. With the pandemic going on, workflows changed for a lot of people. Some work from home last year. Others may have started their own businesses or earned money through a side gig. Well, whatever your situation was, it may affect how you file your taxes. ABC's M1 explains what impact those changes can have when filing your tax return. Working from home has become the new normal for many Americans. But before you try to write off a portion of your utilities from last year, keep in mind that you might not be eligible for the home office deduction. Keep in mind, this is if you're self-employed that you will qualify for this deduction. If you're basically working a nine to five for an employer, you're not able to claim this deduction. Self-employed includes business owners and independent contractors. And in those cases, you may qualify for a number of additional tax breaks. So for those individuals who are self-employed, not only are your home office deduction, but you can take additional expenses when it relates to maybe traveling, transportation, advertising. In this case, it's really important that you keep a track of all of your expenses. You have backups for this. So you want to have the evidence of all of these expenses and report them. If you pursued a side gig like an Etsy shop or dog sitting service, to be honest, anytime you make that dollar or so, you do need to report it to the IRS, give or take, right? And so if you are making money from a side gig or a hobby, you will need to report that income on your tax returns. That includes income that you received, you know, through Venmo or PayPal, a check. The IRS has a threshold and above that threshold, you will get taxed, but it's still important to report any and all income. The good news, your side gig may qualify for those home office and business expense deductions. M1 ABC News. 940 about 75 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And coming up next, they're cute, kind of creepy, and call the Edwards offer for home. We're talking about the Texas blind salamander. And after the break, meteorologist Sarah Spivey will show us conservation efforts in place to help these little guys thrive and stay alive. Welcome back, 943 Earth Day just around the corner next Friday, April 22nd to be exact. It's a day where we celebrate our natural resources and think about ways we can conserve and maintain clean habits. And one of our most cherished natural resources is the Edwards Aquifer, the source of fresh water for millions around San Antonio and home to many at risk species. The Texas blind salamander is one of those creatures and meteorologist Sarah Spivey joins us now to chat about efforts to conserve their population. Hi there, Sarah. Hey Spivey. guys, good morning. So when we think about the Edwards Aquifer, you know, we often think about our drinking water mm -hmm. and like right now we're under stage two water restrictions. A lot of people think that those restrictions are in place uh, to keep uh, uh, us fed with water, right? <laughs> and enjoying a little bit of water. But in reality, those are in place to keep the springs of the aquifer clear, clean, and flowing because the aquifer is home to many of these at-risk species. And at the San Marcos Aquatic Resources Center, a backup population of the salamanders is kept alive and well just in case something happens to their population. And the idea here is that if something catastrophic were to happen to the aquifer itself or the rivers that are fed, like the San Marcos River, we would have a population on station. Here, they feed and breed the Texas blind salamanders to keep the population going. But what makes this strange looking salamander a perfect mascot for the Edwards aquifer? It's got these long gangly arms, it's got these really like fluffy gills, and it's completely white. And so it's kind of a very intriguing species. 
and I think people gravitate to its cuteness and its slightly creepiness, but it also its mystery. And researchers here are trying to solve the mystery of the Texas blind salamander, as details about the species population can be a bit fuzzy. We do some tagging where we, when we catch animals, uh, we'll release some that we catch and we'll tag them so that if we catch them again, we'll know it. And that can give us an idea of how many are down there. In reality, it's difficult to know just how large or small the Texas blind salamander population is, simply because the tiny creatures live deep underground and underwater in a vast pitch black aquifer which spans thousands of miles. But we do know that they're likely a top predator within the aquifer system, eating worms and small shrimp. Pretty much anything that swims in front of them, they'll probably try to eat it. Um, so not too discerning of an animal, but whenever there's not much down there, you have to take what you can get. Researchers have also determined that the salamanders can live for quite a long time because of their slow metabolism. We have some here that have lived about 10 to 15 years so far, but I wouldn't be surprised if they live 20 years or more. So if the Texas blind salamander lives for quite some time and their population is healthy, why do we need to regulate the water level and quality of the aquifer? They have very permeable skin, like if, if there's some contaminant in the water, it's going to permeate them too, right? Uh, unlike us who have like very tough skin, who are very resistant to environmental changes, they're super sensitive to environment, environmental changes. And in the end, the scientists here believe conservation efforts are not just about the species we protect. Through conservation, we're actually preserving these ecosystems and these, these river systems for our use too. And that's the thing, you know, even though they're monitoring the water quality and the water level for these salamanders and other at risk species, we benefit too. We get clean aquifer water and the aquifer is a great topic that meteorologist Justin Horn and I love to talk about. And so if you'd like to know more about those conservation efforts and even just how the Edwards aquifer works, we have a whole KSAT explains episode on the Edwards aquifer, which can be found on KSAT.com. So in your uh, animation there, in the middle of your story, it sounded like salamanders enjoy saltines. Is that, is that <laughs> yeah. crunch, crunch, crunch. I guess when you crunch a sh uh, aquifer shrimp, it makes that sound. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. So yeah, it's just fascinating. Not much is known about them, right. except that they are at risk oh, because yeah. of their permeable skin. And they really are so creepy and cute to hold. It's but that was interesting. I didn't know they were further up on the food chain. I just I didn't either. You know, so I little. thought that they were they right. were basically bait for something else. Right. I know they're the top predators. They're like the lions of the aquifer. The, the great white shark of some local creeks. Right, exactly. Okay. So uh -huh. yeah, again, that whole KSAT Explains episode is, is on a line right now on KSAT.com. Very cool. Thank you, Sarah, for Thank joining you, us Sarah. today. And happy Earth Day. Yeah, happy Thanks. Earth Day. All right, from salamanders to a smoke update for me. Yeah. Creepy cute. I love that uh, description of those salamanders. Hey, it, this is a product on our radar that we use every now and then to show smoke and where fires are. And it may get some use today. Unfortunately, we'll be able to kind of pinpoint where fires may pop up and where some of that smoke may be going. You can see one example out there near Midland fire there with some smoke coming off of that. We're going to get more northwesterly winds today. So if there are already fires off to our north and west, some of that smoke could conceivably work in our direction too. Something we'll monitor today with the fire threat the way it is. Dew points are still high right now. We've got dew points in the upper 60s, but the dry line sits just off to our west. There's a frontal boundary, and that's all going to be working in our direction a little bit later this morning into early this afternoon. Once that dry air starts to move in, those dew points really fall off. We're looking at dew points in the teens, potentially 20s and 30s here around San Antonio. <laughs> And that is extremely dry air. You see even drier air out west. That combined with the gusty winds, northwesterly winds, anywhere from 10 to 20, gusty to 25, means that uh, wildfires can spread really, really quickly. We've shown you this uh, extensively through the morning, but one more look. Red flag warning is in effect 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. This evening forecast for today. Clouds really are starting to clear out. I'm looking at some of the trans guy cameras and the sun is popping out there on the city's west side. We'll see more of that as uh, the morning wears on and as we get a little closer to noontime. 92 by 3 p.m., 93 by 4 p.m., 94 our high temperature. You see the winds there in that 10 to 20 range and then calming some. Once we get to 8, 9 o'clock, temperatures falling off into the 80s. And by tomorrow morning, it'll feel pretty good outside. We'll have the dry air and with clear skies, those temperatures will be allowed to fall into the 50s to start your Thursday. So we have the fire danger today. Good news is the dew point jumps back up by tomorrow somewhat and then by Friday we get a lot more moisture in here and that uh, that takes away the fire concerns but this may lead to a couple of showers and storms over the weekend which is a good thing as long as we can avoid 
the severe weather. Yesterday evening, this is around 6 o'clock, those storms had basically gone away. And you see we had clear skies until the clouds rolled in this morning. And they were fairly thick for a time, but now they're starting to really break up. 75 degrees at the airport, southerly winds at about 8, that dew point still at 68. Satellite picture shows uh, the, the clearing skies. We're starting to see some of the clouds break up there across the northwestern side of the county. Still some partly cloudy skies, but it's not that thick overcast. And really, I think we go sunny by late this afternoon as that drier air works its way in. Temperature wise, we're at 79 in Castroville at Stinson 79, so it is a warm morning for sure. 72 burning stage, 75 right now at Comfort. And as we look at the big picture here, this is a very dynamic spring storm system. Brought uh, severe weather yesterday in parts of Texas all the way up the plains. You can see it spinning here on the back side of it. We actually have blizzard warnings and blizzard conditions across parts of North Dakota. A pretty serious threat up there. And then uh, further south, you have the uh, severe weather threat, which covers a lot of real estate today. Shreveport, Little Rock, Memphis, Birmingham, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Chicago, just to name a few of the cities in a line of fire today with this storm system as it marches east. We're not in the line of fire. We're on the backside of it now, so it's just the gusty winds and fire danger. 86 Thursday, but we start off at 52. 85 Friday, 94 Saturday, 93 Sunday. Both days will have a small chance for some afternoon pop-up storms. At least that's the way it looks right now. Don't cancel your Easter plans, but know that is a threat over the weekend. We'll be right back. And it's game day for our San Antonio Spurs. They're going to face the Pelicans in New Orleans. That's tonight. Tip-off is set for 8.30 p.m. That's kind of late for Mark and myself, but we're going to power through. Yes, we will. And the winner continues on. The loser is out of the playoffs. San Antonio Missions losing their home opener last night out of Wolf Stadium 4-6. But they have another chance to redeem themselves tonight against the Frisco Rough Riders. Tonight's game starts at 7.05 at Wolf Stadium. It's Military Appreciation Night. Frisco's in town for a bunch of games. They play tonight, tomorrow night, Friday night, and then a doubleheader on Saturday. Good luck to our missions. Mm, and forecast for today. We're going to be uh, seeing those temperatures jump up here pretty quickly. The sun is starting to pop out. 94 today. Windy, high fire danger, very dry air. And then a little cooler tomorrow, 52 to start your Thursday, 86 for a high. Pretty quiet weather to finish out the work week, maybe a few storms this weekend. And the oak pollen continues. Are you hearing the sniffling and sneezing in the background yes. here? Kevin just sneezed. Yeah, I sneezed earlier. We're all taking I turns. feel like we're at the peak right now. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's, I mean, you can get your car washed. I need to pressure wash my entire back porch, but I, there's I no do point too. doing that yet. I do yeah. too. I have a table on my back porch and I... You know, put my finger along it. Yes. Yellow everything. That fun yellow green film. Mm. That time mm. of year. You guys have a great day. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>